Welcome to episode 13 of the Film Festival Secrets Podcast, October 27th, 2013. My name is Chris Holland. Today we're going to talk about short films and what festivals are looking for from short films. This is a preview of our upcoming webinar, Short Film Secrets, which you can get more information about at atlantafilmfestival.com slash classes. The first offering of that webinar is this week, and we'll be offering it again in the future. So check out atlantafilmfestival.com slash classes for more local classes and classes we offer online. Today, I'm sitting down with Charles Judson and Christina Humphrey, who are programmers I work with at the Atlanta Film Festival. Christina is in charge of all of our short films, so she, uh, you want to listen to what she has to say. Hello, Charles. Hello, Alan. Time for another episode. Yes. Today we have with us shorts programmer extraordinaire, Christina Humphrey. Say hello, Christina. Hi, everyone. And we're going to talk about short films, how we love them, how we don't love them sometimes. Indeed. Uh, we have the, I won't say singular, but the special honor of being an Academy qualifying short film festival. Charles, tell us a little bit about what that means. So for us, uh, we're among a elite number of festivals. There's about maybe 30 in the United States and a few more around the world. So it's about 60 total festivals out of maybe three, 4,000 festivals that um, are Academy Report qualifying, which means when a short wins our narrative uh, feature comp- narrative short competition or when an animated film, uh, animated short wins our animated uh, short competition, they qualify to be able to submit their film to the Academy for consideration to the short list. It does not mean they automatically, you know, are nominated, but it just means that they are put, you know, they get to submit alongside um, all the other fans, films that are being submitted every year from, you know, alongside from countries and from companies um, to be looked at um, and be, you know, be in the hunt for an Oscar. So pro tip, uh, if you think your film might be award-winning uh, stuff, then you should really look at the other qualifying rules to make sure you're fulfilling all of the qualifications uh, to, to be considered for an Oscar. Because who doesn't want to be considered for an Oscar? And who doesn't think their film has the stuff? Uh, y- <laughs> yes, to, correct. To be an Oscar qualifier. Well, I, we wanted to talk a little bit about, um, you know, your experiences as a short film programmer at the Atlanta Film Festival, uh, because you watch a lot of movies, and I think uh, filmmakers are interested in hearing directly from a shorts programmer what you like, what you don't like, what you see too much of, what you'd rather see more of. Um, tell us exactly why you get out of bed in the morning. What makes you come do this day after day? Um... Well, I, I mean, I love, I love having days of watching films. I mean, I'm watching films every single day, um, you know, between brief spurts and, you know, some days all day long. But, um, you know, it's, it's finding the one that after, like, days of not seeing anything that really made me feel anything except maybe anger, <laughs> um... But seeing one that made me feel like, like, yes, thank you, finally, someone got it. And whether that be in, you know, science fiction or narrative or animation, it's just being that one person who made me feel. Um, because watching films day after day can be especially numbing. And um, I, I even become, I feel sometimes insensitive. Um, but at the end of the day, when I do find something that makes me feel, I know it, and it's not something I have to think about at all. It's just something that I know. Why is that experience so rare? Uh, there's there's a multitude of reasons. Um, it, it can be from everyone trying to um, cash in on a trend, if you will, or um, finding, or everyone just trying to... Um, almost trying to, like, figure out what everyone else wants versus maybe what they personally, I don't know, it's, it's, it's so, there's so many reasons, um, I'm trying to be more simple, 
I'm trying to be less fancy. So you're saying it's like they're, they, the only reason why you're making a zombie film is not because you love zombies. It's because you think zombie films get into lots of festivals. Right, and, it, and, it, and it, you totally see it um, because they're the same themes or the same character that you saw in the last zombie film. Or um, the, they even look the same. Zombies start to look the same. Uh, there's no individuality to your zombies, and it's just um, it's just another. It becomes just another zombie film, and it doesn't really stand out. I mean, we've seen the romantic zombies, we've seen the zombies that are the guy that's about to turn into a zombie that has a kid, and you know, there's just the guy trying to survive, and all of a sudden, you know, he's got to help protect someone else because he finds someone else who's survived. I mean, there's just so many, you know, factors, and then the funny zombies. You know, mm. it's. It's just a lot of zombies, man. I love funny zombies. <laughs> uh, I, if they're really funny, but they're rarely yeah. actually really funny. So yeah. what I'm hearing is that people are thinking about how to make a film that gets into festivals. I I think so. I mean, and sometimes, you know, like I question, I see a film and I question whether the person has ever seen like a handful of short films and seen what, you know, the kind of, the caliber of, of films that are being, you know, accepted at top festivals. Um, I wonder if they've ever been to a festival, uh, much less a, a block of shorts. Um, you know, it's 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 very interesting because I, I think that they would see, you know, kind of what they're up against when it comes to, you know, other work. And that's something to take into consideration when you submit your film somewhere. So you're a short filmmaker or you want to be a short filmmaker and you don't want to get lumped into the pile of films that don't make Christina Humphrey feel anything. Uh, how do we combat that? You know, how do you? What are the steps that you might take to, to ensure that you're not making another film that ends up on the pile? Um, I just originality. I mean, I know that that is said over and over again. Maybe I don't know. Um, but I I think originality is is really really important. Um, and just trying to make a story that is is just a small story. I think a lot of people take on too much. Um, and I would much rather have a moment um, that resonates than a full-on story with an arch. And, you know, I mean, there can be, these. this can be accomplished, but it's not on the scale of a feature. And I think that's another problem is, you know, it's just, you want to find a bit and not waste any frames, not have anything wasted. Um, and just try and, you know, focus on a five, eight minute, ten minute, twelve minutes. I mean, just there's no perfect, um, there's no perfect equation that, you know, can, you know, your short is a great short. It's, it's, it's a small story that you can focus on instead of trying to focus on so many factors. And the ones that end up focusing on the smallest stories that you might not even think would be um, entertaining or worthy end up being the most authentic so education seems to be a, a key issue here you you can't know what's original if you don't know what's already been done right um so let's assume that you're joe filmmaker and you don't live in a town with a film festival which is pretty rare by the way um, <laughs> yeah. the number of festivals in small towns in Mississippi would knock you out. <laughs> um, and now maybe those festivals don't have access to, you know, the best caliber of shorts, but that's still not necessary. Let's excuse, let's, uh, assume you're on the South Pole, right? You're living in Antarctica. How do you figure out what's out there in terms of short films that are playing festivals? Um, well, you, it's, it's actually really simple now. Um, I, I do it every week, if not every other, I mean, you know, if not every day, but just going on, um, you know, looking at festivals lineups, uh, that are being posted year round when they program or even going on Twitter and Kickstarter and searching for films that are being made. And, um, I mean, hashtag like short film and you will come up with tons of people trying to promote their films and just kind of seeing it's just it it doesn't take that long to figure it out it's just um taking the time to do it and searching through a huge pile it's it's definitely it's just investing your time and doing the research and it's fairly simple with social media i mean i find a ton of films on facebook surprisingly enough uh you know just because their facebook page pops up on like the side of my 
um, might be, but or somebody else that I know liked a film, um, and it comes up. Yeah. You know, it's just doing your research. Yeah. Well, let's point out a couple of resources. Uh, first one is Short of the Week. Yes. Uh, Short of the Week dot com, uh, which posts. Uh, what they deem to be the best short films, uh, many of which have played festivals. I think that's the hard part, is if you look at film festival lineups right now, they're listing the films that they're playing right now, which almost by definition are not available online. Right. So you need to be able to see films that played festivals six months ago or a year ago. And so sites like Short of the Week are the best place for that. Vimeo Staff Picks. Vimeo Staff Picks is wow, an awesome, yeah. yeah, awesome resource. Yeah. Uh, also, uh, now every year, uh, Sundance releases, you know, 10 plus of their short films mm -hmm. on YouTube uh, for the world to enjoy as they're playing the festival, which I think is, if you want to see the cream of the crop when it comes to short films, you know, you need to be watching those three sites, I think, are, are probably three of your biggest resources. Right, right, for sure. Can make or break your film uh but yeah it's it's really amazing i i consider it to be a trend because it early on like in may when, that was when submissions we opened submissions right? mm -hmm. yeah. yeah may was when i started seeing this and noticed it i think by june i was like whoa and it, they keep coming and uh it's it's really interesting um that was i felt like it's something that people were scared to approach uh when it came to shorts and, and you don't think they're doing it cynically now I mean, because there's the old joke that if you want to get an Oscar, you know, play someone with mental deficiencies. With a, in a feature, though. Right. In a feature. And in a, in a, I think it's 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 very hard to do in a, in a short film. Uh, just like um, having a couple in a short film and establishing this chemistry between them in a really short time is a very difficult thing to do. And I almost kind of put that in the same category. I mean, because it's it's hard to make, you know, a, a character, you know, have that authenticity when it comes to chemistry between the characters, especially when you, uh, one has a challenge with communication, and uh, it comes into play with dialogue and the way that they're interacting on the screen, and it can feel, I mean, if it's not authentic, it will feel very, uh, non, non authentic is better. Yeah. <laughs> uh, really fast. And these are stories being told from those characters' point of view. Right, yeah, yeah. and, um, yeah, and even adding more, you know, and sometimes multiple characters um, come into play, and it's 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 very fascinating. Um, it's, I agree because really I, I agree because I know the problem in the past would be when we got shorts um, like that that they were mostly told from the perspective of like parents and someone other dealing, so, like somebody dealing, having yeah, to deal, yeah, yeah, and it just was so not nice. Yeah, it was kind of patronizing. It was, you know, indeed, even though you could tell the filmmakers, the, the you could tell the sentiment behind it was genuine. Right. Unfortunately, not realizing the execution of not telling the story from that character's perspective right. was actually a little bit patronizing. Right, and it just kind of, yeah. In, in the end, it left it left you with a negative, just a really bad taste in your mouth, and um, yeah, it, yeah, that's what happens. All right, let's sum up here. So I'm hearing. Uh, make your film efficiently with a, an economy of storytelling. Don't waste any time. Don't waste any frames. Don't waste any money <laughs> on a location. <laughs> a location is really that. You haven't mentioned that before. Uh, yeah. Okay. So I saw, I saw this film a couple of months ago and like part of their covers, the cover letter was telling me how much money they spent on the location that they got and all the other films that have filmed at this location. And they basically spent like 80% of their budget on their location. And that was like part of their pitch to me. And the location I could not have given. Was it like Bronson Canyon or something? I, I don't need, I just wanted to forget. Like, I, it just pissed me <laughs> off so bad. Because I was like, I could give two, I don't give two crafts about your location. Like, I want to know if your story is okay. And that's what, I, you know, and their story wasn't that great. Well, well, just the it was question, really pretty. Well, the question I would ask, following real quick on that, is what, what's more important, the location or the production design? Because we've had this kind of discussion before about, like, especially for shorts where, you know, there's nothing more impressive than a filmmaker that really fills the frame. And, like, you, when you see it, there's choices there. And, you know, that the, for a short, they're not really just shortchanging it. That they're treating it a little bit. That's one of those areas where they're treating it like a feature. Um, I mean, I, t I totally appreciate, um, you know, like the mise-en-scene. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. I mean, that is that is somewhere where, as a shorts programmer, you know, it, making a short, you have the time to fill up every frame with, you know, being very deliberate with every decision. But when it comes to a location, you know, um, just spending money because a location just doesn't really matter because you can make up the location. You can make a location what it is, you know, and you don't have to be, uh, you know, at this popular location spending all of your budget just to have the location, to, like, give that, attach that to your project. It's so unnecessary if the story isn't there. It's just, it's really exhausting. <laughs> I, I feel exhausted for you guys. I, <laughs> I, I get very exhausted. <laughs> All right, so don't spend a lot of money on a location. I mentioned it in your cover letter. Uh, get educated. Know what other films are out there. Uh, don't make a zombie movie. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and make people laugh. Yes. Make and be authentic. People, yes. And be authentic. Make people feel. And put special needs people in your short film. No. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's already doing that. We shouldn't tell them to do that. Because next year, yeah. Yeah, next year it'll be, it'll be passe. Yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, thanks for hanging out with us, Christina. Of course. And, uh, submit your films to Atlanta Film Festival before our deadlines in November. November 8th is our late deadline, and November 22nd is our extended deadline. Do not submit to our extended deadline. That's when we jack up our prices. The whole point is to get you to submit earlier. Yes, please submit as early as you can. It makes all of our lives easier. You can find our submissions page at atlantafilmfestival.com slash submit. Uh, we do also have a screenplay contest, uh, so you can submit to that if you have a screenplay you're working on. You can follow Atlanta Film Festival at ATLFilm365 on Twitter. You can follow me at FF Secrets on Twitter. Uh, don't forget to visit FilmFestivalSecrets.com for more podcast episodes and more great advice. And we'll see you next time. Thanks.